Yep, we are up. Let me get the music going. Woo. I didn't start it yet. That was, uh, I guess, another thing I didn't plan. Guys, there you go. How's it going, everyone? I got tavern music that plays in the background. We are live again here, guys. This is the fourth podcast, and this week we got Kyle Dempster Studios, a fellow ESO streamer. Kyle Dempster, thanks for coming and hanging out. Uh, absolutely. Thank you for having me. No problem, dude. I've been meaning to do this for probably three or four weeks now. We were talking earlier. A ton of our viewers are in common, and they always, like, we've kind of found each other through our in common viewers. I found Kyle through uh, one of my viewers, and he found someone through one of his viewers. So that's it's pretty ironic that that was the way we met. Yeah, it totally is. I mean, that, that's Twitch. Or that's Twitter. No, what am I? It's on networking. I can't even speak. We've been talking about too many of these before <laughs> we got on Twitch, Twitter. Who cares? It's networking, man. You're meeting friends. That's what it's all about. It is for sure. Um, and you're relatively new to the ESO community, from what I, from what I know. Yeah, I just started uh, ESO mid June, so it's what a little over two months now. So I still consider myself a newbie. <laughs> you're probably. I was probably a newbie for a year and a half before I actually knew what I was doing, like, mechanics, build-wise. I was just, like, playing the game, questing, enjoying it, like, Skyrim style, not really playing Elder Scrolls Online style. Yeah, there's so much to it. Uh, it it's, it's, I mean, if you're a fan of Skyrim and, and Oblivion, you know, you know the lore of it, but uh, there's a lot more to the lore, you know, in this. Like you said, mechanics. It's an MMO, but it's it's a mix between the two. It's not like anything I played before, so it's like the best of both worlds. Yeah, it really is. So for this podcast, what I really wanted to talk about, and I'm going off the cuff, guys. So I made notes, and then I started talking to Kyle. We just kept going back and forth, and I was like, you know, I, don't, I don't need the notes. We threw them out. But I did want us to talk about Twitch, the ESO community, Kyle's experience on Twitch, and then move over to ESO, talk about ESO and what's going on in the game and certain things he likes and dislikes. So with um, your Twitch channel, I want to ask, how long have you been streaming for and have you been playing other games before ESO? Yeah, so I started on Twitch probably June of last year, so just past uh, a, the year mark. And in that time, I feel like I've played, well, it's been good for me in that I've played a lot of games I wouldn't have played otherwise. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think what I even started on. Oh, I started with Stardew Valley, of all things. Like I was like, this is not a game I play by myself. I'm going to you know, do this on Twitch, which is actually a nice place to start. I met some great people there. They're like a legitimate audience in that, that game. Uh, it's very small nowadays. I don't know with their new patches and stuff, but it was tiny back then. You know, it was in a lull of a release cycle sort of thing. But met some really cool people, and they just stuck with me for the most part. So I've still got uh, a good chunk of my originals around, and they followed me through a ton of random things like City Builders and uh, Seven Days to Die, like sandbox-style games. The whole way back around. We did Skyrim, actually, in, in November of last year, and now here we are with uh, Elder Scrolls Online. That's awesome. Yeah, the, I, um, before we even talk about the games, it's really impressive. I've seen a lot of streamers, and it's something that I try to do, is take your viewers with you. That's hard, because a lot of viewers you get <laughs> when you're streaming are for the game, not for you. And so when yes. you move games, you see some drop, and sometimes a big drop. And I, when you just said that, I, I, from another streamer to another streamer, that's really impressive. It's tough to do that. It really is, and I find you don't keep a lot. Like, you'll keep... I, I, I mean, honestly, since I started... I picked up a couple friends along the way in each game, I'd say, but for the most part, you keep maybe only like three or so. I've heard stories of partnered streamers that used to be back in the day, like they one guy was telling the tale, he had 400 viewers in Minecraft. He switched games and he was pulling like five afterwards because that is how legitimate the loss is when you switch up games. Yeah, I, I've noticed the same thing. I've definitely experimented with different games. And we were talking about this um, earlier, trying to, you know, we were talking about being smaller streamers in the ESO community. Not not tiny, but definitely like that medium round. It, it's not a quick start to a stream. As we said, it goes 10, 15, 20. And, you, and you're trying to build up and you're trying to stay positive. You're trying to have a good time. And it's very tough to keep that consistency when you switch a game, even for one night. And you'll have certain viewers, they'll say, hey, can you play this game? And you're like, I will, I will. But I just, right now, this game is, I'm doing well in this game. I'm enjoying it. I need to stay here for the stream and just because I'm enjoying it, and sometimes that makes some people unhappy. Yeah, and, it, and it's also the tricky thing with it. One of one of the pieces of advice that I got and hated from the very start was uh, a friend through Twitch saying, if you want to get to be a partner someday, you need to just go play one of 
these games and it, he gave a list and it was like CSGO and like all these other things that are not me and he was like just play them for like five months straight hate your life but you'll become a partner at the end he's like I, I have a friend that did it and I have no doubt that if you are kind of crazy and willing to self-sacrifice to that degree you might be able to cut it there but I'm like no Twitch is also my escape it's my fun thing I don't want to make it my anti-fun like i don't want to come home and dread it because i'm playing the wrong game so you kind of have to find eso and mmos in general have kind of been for me something that i like a lot just content wise i've always enjoyed mmos but there's also so much to them that it makes it easy plus the social component is built right in instead of some other games you have to like make it or they just have to watch you play it like your I, audience yeah. just can sit on the sidelines yeah that's definitely a big thing and um when switching, when switching games, it's, it's a tough growth period. And the thing I was, uh, you were talking about earlier too, I kind of wanted to bring up was that, uh, is it for fun or is it a job? And what point, what threshold of viewer count, follower count, subscriber count do you go, okay, I need to dedicate time to this even if I'm not enjoying it because it is now a job. People have paid me monthly to say, hey, I want to watch you do this content. And when does that responsibility, when does it become more of a responsibility and less of an enjoyment? And can you combine the two? Because I think you can. We see a lot of streamers in our community uh, Kev do it, Ninja614, just a couple off the top of my head, who are having so much fun. But it's also their livelihood. It's it, it's what they're, I mean, uh, especially for Kev do it, it, it. He's a full-time YouTuber, Twitch streamer, and he loves it. And it's something that, um, it's hard to combine the two. Yeah, I think, I think there's also something to be said there that uh, you want to diversify, too. And I'm not at that point yet, where you know, people say, uh, don't put all your eggs in one basket in the online space. Don't solely do a podcast don't solely do youtube don't solely do twitch because those companies have such a bad habit of screwing us over as content creators and when i say us i shouldn't say me because they don't screw me over <laughs> i'm still like small pickings for them but people that are actually you know self-sustaining through that uh you know they, they tweak an algorithm like adpocalypse on youtube so i feel like um that's something we both need to focus on in our future is like spreading out and i think you're doing a great thing here at the podcast and that's something I'm trying to do soon in the future too, is get another podcast rolling. So that's not just Twitch all the time. Plus it gives you something else to talk about during the week. Well, I think I'll have to be on your podcast and you'll have to be on my podcast. I think that's how we'll pay each yes. other back. We'll, we'll, we'll be like the, uh, I know Ninja Monkey told me today, we'll be the fill-ins. Like if you can't get someone, always hit me up. And if I can't <laughs> get someone, I'll always hit you up. I'll be like, all right, I need you guys here for this night because it's, uh, no one fell through. But uh, yeah, and the thing that's great about the podcast is it still is in the realm of Elder Scrolls, and I think that was the oh, tough yeah. part for me, was I love Elder Scrolls, like, for me, um, I'm just very knowledgeable about the game, knowledgeable about the Elder Scrolls lore. I remember I came in your channel one time, and I was like, oh, I gotta tell you this lore, watch this video, and I sent you that uh, YouTube series of, like, the lore videos that I really like, and uh, the podcast let me stay in the ESO space, and the Elder Scrolls space, but do something a little different, so I think, yeah, definitely diversifying ourselves, but not doing it and taking a huge viewer count hit every day is something it's nice to find that medium yeah I, I know people do the variety stream night sort of thing i'm not there yet with what i no. want to do yeah, uh, it's just a variety stream night is a lot and i i found that in the past trying something like that even one night a week you like you said you take such a big hit and not to make this all about numbers you guys but like we i i'd say that snowstorms and i are at probably at that same point where um, we have a lot to gain and also a lot to lose now. Like, cause we're, we're pulling, what would we say? Like an average of 30 to 40 a night, maybe. And that's all thanks to you guys that show up. On yeah, night thank you. Day. Seriously. Give Everyone watching this. Thank you. Like you're literally making our dreams come true one at a time. But we're at that point where it's like, man, if you start to do something different, we still can like drop enough to make it hurt. Uh, when you get to that higher, like I can pull a hundred a night sort of thing consistently you can you can afford that every once in a while like it's true down, like, and you know and you know if you take a night off and then you come back it won't hurt you at all and you can right. see that um <laughs> trying it a couple times and test it out and sometimes it, it, it's i always say this and i mean it from the bottom of my heart i am so truly blessed to have what i have and to have the viewers that i have and have the community that both of us have created and are very much linked together with elder scrolls i really do like i never mind hosting you because i feel like i'm just pushing my show to the next person and just like you host me it's like hey it's another channel that's playing the game trying to be right. positive but um it's it, 
the numbers do sometimes take an effect and you want to build it to something to be really special and you want to be a bigger streamer and it it's just such a fine line to walk because I never want to sound like I don't have enough but at the same time there's always that want for more and you're like am I a bad person am I bad for wanting this am I bad that like one night I we only had 10 people and I was mad about it like such a hard line to walk it's a hard line to walk, but I would say it's normal. I, I mean, it, you know, if anything, this is maybe a little depressing, but it's, it's made me understand. I used to be like, man, why do those big companies like Amazon always have to be growing, taking more and more and more? Like, why can't they ever be happy? And I'm like, you know what? I get it as a streamer, because if you're not growing, you're shrinking. There's not really like, There's you, no you can't tread water for too long before you start to go into the red. Uh, Apparently, you need to turn your mic up. I'm yeah, I, sure did. I did. I did turn it up. That. I did turn it up. I, I look at the comments. I just literally can't type. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> Sorry about that. I broke the fourth wall. But, <laughs> it's okay. I've done it before. <laughs> look, they're calling for my help. I have to help them. Uh, but no, I get I mean, it's, 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 it's made me understand that side that you can't tread water in this space. Like, you really have to be growing because, like we were talking about before, there is an attrition rate. Most of the time, like, I followed up with viewers, too, like, loyalists that are were always there for, like, a month straight. And I'm like, so what happened? Or not, I won't ask it like that, but like, hey, how's it going? Like, is everything good? Haven't seen you. And they're like, yeah, my life's just busy. I'm like, ah, oh, man, that sucks for both of us. Because your life is busy, and I get that, and you probably wish it wasn't viewer number, whatever. But, you know, also it hurts, you know, what we're trying to work on at the same time. So it's like a lose-lose. I, I appreciate the transparency that you give us because it's something that you open yourself up. Because I've done the same thing. I, I see people, I'll look at like an old stream from like a year ago and I see all these names. I'm like, oh my gosh. And then I PM them all and I don't go, where'd you go? I go, hey man, I hope life <laughs> is treating you well. Um, How you been? And then, of course, they know what we're doing. A lot of them, oh, sorry, I haven't been on. And then a lot of them will say stream a different game. I've gotten a lot of people who just said oh. I got sick of Elder Scrolls. And I was, really? Yeah, I, I, I want to say a lot of the time when we lose people, it's not that we're losing them, it's Elder Scrolls is losing them. And when, huh. you know, you and me, as we said, we can't do those variety nights, we lose those viewers. And sometimes it's tough because you don't, at least for me, as probably more of a stream watcher, um, I don't know how much you watch streams, but I like to watch streams about games I'm interested in. Like, if I see one of my favorite streamers streaming something else, I'm like, eh, I'll just go watch one of the guys who's playing my game. And so sometimes people switch games, and what I'll do a lot of the time, and I shouldn't do it, is I'll friend request a lot of the viewers who are normals, and if they leave, I can see who else they're watching, and if they change, <laughs> and it's so bad, it's so bad. And ah. I, that's not the only reason I do it, but it's definitely, right. I, I, I've said, I'm kind of a spy, I'll be like, oh, okay, and I like to see what viewers like, honestly, it's just me watching another streamer, oh, this guy who likes me likes this, what does this guy do correctly, or this lady, and so, yeah. it, again, it's just, it's such a tough line to walk at our our spot in growth, because we've seen growth, it's exciting, but at the same time, you can't let it go to your head and get discouraged when you have a bad night, but you got to keep pushing, and you can't you can't make sacrifices yet for viewers because you just need to keep pulling in more. And sometimes the difference between 15 and 25 is all you need to get a big host, is all you need to get one more follower, one more subscriber, and it's important at our size. I think you're totally right. And so just today, I I, I took a piece uh, of advice from uh, like kind of one of those people out there that just you know they do like stream coaching sort of stuff. And I was tuned in, like, I try and keep myself always to open to things. I listen to a couple stream podcasts that talk about, like, they'll interview partners and stuff like that, successful streamers, just so that I'm not being closed-minded. You know, I don't have to take all the advice. Not all the advice is for me. And, you know, I, I'm obviously forging my own path in its own way. But I like to, like, get other opinions. And one thing I heard that I really liked is I'm going to start doing a featured member sort of thing every week and post it on Discord. Um just as a way to highlight like a random person from the community. Primarily it's gonna be people, uh, I, I know Daniel was in chat here. He got picked as our first person uh, because he's been super, super active in our guild. He's like super helped us with our guild hall. I mean, just an all around great guy. We'll go do sky shard hunts with us, things like that. And it's so little effort for us to do something like that. I'm like, I shouldn't be skipping out on this. And it turned out to be so much cooler than I even first expected because when I was reading his answer, so I, I sent him like quite a few questions. I, I took um, a lot of questions from the, the original like source I found it from. And then I added some that were a little specific to me. And his answers were like so interesting because though I hang out with Daniel, I, would, I don't know, like five nights a week-ish, I didn't know 
his taste of music or uh like where he wanted to visit in the world or like life dreams and things i was like that's actually really really interesting uh it's just like a tool that's super super easy and i don't know i just feel like i made a better connection for doing that it's... so i'm trying to do little tweaks like that yeah, I've, I've done sort of the same, not the same exact thing, but what I've done is I've included a lot of my viewers into my stream. So I'm, as we were talking, very much a dungeon stream with a dedicated team that's trying to be tough stuff. And now I've stopped at 11, and for the last hour, I just play with viewers. What do you guys need to do? What do you need to run? Do you need help? And letting them come and being uh, one of the better players on Xbox, definitely not in like the top 10 or anything. Excuse me. But helping them get the stuff they need and helping them with their builds. Um, and just like treating them not as numbers but as people is seriously right. something. And, and, and as you just said, figuring out that information, I mean, the people who are watching us are not just bots. These are people who are dedicated viewers interested in what we're doing. And it's so humbling and flattering to have someone interested, even two people, in your content, let alone 30 to 40. And both, I mean, you're almost at 2,000 followers, I'm almost to 1,000. That's still pretty mind-boggling like think to yourself i remember someone tweeted when you're streaming and you have 50 people think of 50 people sitting behind you watching you play the game it's a very yeah. different thought you're like oh my god i don't think 50 people would fit in this tiny room of mine. <laughs> so it, right it, it's um i think um, happens. Another has someone joined just followed and it's so loud in my ear i never got to turn it off because the time I'll have to turn that off next week but he's um, having physical pain for you guys <laughs> it's so it. loud but thank you for the follow um kind of lost my train of thought but I 50 out. people are with you in a room at the same time they're not numbers they're people yeah and i think maybe that's the way to not let the numbers get to you <laughs> not let the numbers get to you it, it is hard though because uh like we've talked about there's an attrition rate and it does hurt us as streamers <laughs> here you go audience you're getting too much information but it hurts us deep down when we don't see you again because we actually start to make bonds with you and i'm someone that's slow to trust so, you know, when I, I've actually had kind of bad experience about that on, on Twitch. I, I joke with Danny and them that I have something uh, called a mod curse. I've had a really bad time about modding people and then never, not never seeing them again. I have too, but it's okay. But I've modding them and then you see that like, okay, you used to be here for six months straight. Now you're here once a week. Now it's once every two weeks. Now it's never again. And uh, that that's a hard thing to come across or to like get around as a streamer. And that's something that I think that you and I are actively working on. I think ESO really helps because it's such a warm and welcoming community. They're just really nice people, and I think the game helps with that. Uh, like you're saying, you you can get in and play with people right off the bat. That's one of my biggest compliments about ESO, that unlike many other games on the market, including World of Warcraft, ESO lets you really get in from level one or level three, whatever you start at, and actually play with people and almost do any content. Uh, you can pretty much do anything from the start with others. That's crazy for streamers. That's like a really, really nice component because as you're saying, you can tie that in. And I've always considered our guild that we run to be something very friendly to new players. I wanna get better at what you just said about saying, this isn't about me tonight. This is about you guys. As a new guy, I, I struggle with that because I'm like, well, I have to do X, Y, and Z. I'm so far behind the pack. But that's one thing I'm trying to like retool my brain and be like, okay, no, no, no. The stream is not about you, Kyle. You will progress on your own, but you need to go in there and say, what can I help you guys with tonight? Yeah. And I, actually move forward like that. Yeah, and I I think, and this is just from one stream earlier, I think not being the best at, as you possibly can yet is actually a plus because you're way more approachable. I think mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of people when I host you, when I watch you, because I do lurk a lot if you're streaming later than I am. Um, and I see you working with people and it, when you get in a party you're not explaining things they're explaining things to you and I think that makes them more invested and you have questions and it creates a better discussion where with me there's not much new they can tell me because I have some of the most educated people in my ear King Supercuts and Ongoing Agony are two of my good friends they know everything about the game so it's people come to me for help but people go to you a lot of the time not not that you're like a sympathy case oh poor Kyle Dempster sucking at the game but it's more like you're, you're, you're learning with them and that I think is actually a huge point plus so yeah it, it has been helpful uh i won't lie and that's why i kind of use and abuse the newbie title <laughs> i've had so here's what's happened recently is uh when i put out the newbie title i found it to be really beneficial it brings in the new people it brings in the veteran people 
But then every once in a while, uh, a returning viewer, who, who they tend not to be people that have like come every day. They'll be like a once a weeker. They'll be like, are you still a newbie at this game? After they hear me like recite something, like I could tell you exactly when I believe the stars will align and the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary will come back on the market. Like I've done my research. I've talked with people. Like I can pinpoint that. But then they're like, let's do V blah 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 and i'm like what was that acronym again i'm sorry i don't understand <laughs> and i'm like that's why i can still say i'm a newbie i have no idea what you're talking about what the heck is a vma no video music awards <laughs> vma and, vma is right. hell that is what vma is yeah then they'll have to explain it again i'll be like oh right see why you don't criticize me for the title <laughs> yeah that i got like mile deep in tiny tiny areas <laughs> Yeah, the that, rest of it's not scratching the surface. And that's the way to do it, too, is ESO, people come in and they go, why should I play? And I guess it's more of the ESO discussion, but as a quick tangent, um, people, I was telling them, there's just so much to do. One day you can do housing, one day you can do questing, one day you can do PvP, different kinds of PvP, different kinds of group content. It's like, ESO has a lot to offer, but what I wanted to talk about is, you know, not being able to switch the game, or at least, I don't know how you feel, but sometimes I feel like I'm sort of tethered to ESO at the moment as mm. I'm growing. It, it, it can lead to burnouts, and I see a lot of streamers our size leaving. I've seen probably in the huh. past couple of weeks a bunch of streamers right around us, maybe a little bigger, a little smaller, say, I'm not going to play anymore. I'm going to take a break, or I need a week off, or I need two weeks off. And as you probably know, a week off from streaming is suicide. Like, if you take a week off, like, people are going to find other people they like to watch for a week, and that's tough to come back with, so... So. Sometimes, sometimes I'll see low numbers like we were talking about. They go like, at, my brain will say, "Time to take a break, Kyle. Screw this. Just throw, throw, throw the towel in and like take take a week off." And I'm like, instantly, like, no, dude, that will end. That will end you. You're not gonna get any sympathy votes if you do that, dumbass. Like, no, no. no. So I'm like, okay, no, no, no. But what? Um, I need to be better at taking my nights off. My like, I have two nights a week that I'm Me supposed too. to not be streaming. And I, I last night I didn't get on ESO at all. Now Good the danger is, well, but I didn't do my Ritz, man. And my horse was untrained, and I didn't talk to remain silent. So, but shame but on me. It keeps you in the game, I think. I think taking a night off when you come back, like you got to be damn excited for tonight because it's like, oh, I got yes. this day off, like an extra twenty four hours of relaxation, like. Yeah, I, there's that, and I, I think that this game does have a lot to offer. Now I've only been playing it for two months, so. I'm not going to say that there will not come that time that we have burnout, but as someone that's only been playing two months, I'm really excited that the release cycle for this game is really good. So in, in uh, March, mid-March, I started playing WoW again. I hadn't played it in eight years, but I got back into World of Warcraft, and I thought, you know what? This is I had a community member that pushed me into it. I was kind of saying this a minute ago. It's really hard to get people into WoW together. It's yeah. just really hard. It's very expensive. Lots of different servers. Mandatory monthly fee, not good like ESO is. But so I got in there and I did a couple months and I was feeling the burnout. I'm like, crap, you know, this is, I don't want this to happen. The worst thing is feeling that burnout when you know when a game is being good to you or that you're actually starting to make connections in that community. Cause that's the other thing. When you pick up and leave a game, you also kind of leave that community a bit. So like meeting Ninja Monkey and all these other cool people, um, if they're, you know, other streamers in that one community, it's not that you're going to like cease communication, but you kind of might. I mean, you're just going to be in a different area. It's kind of like transferring schools in a way. <laughs> you're it like going to be with all... kid. Right. You can call the old people. You can talk to them, but not to the same degree. You're just not in this. You're not forced into the same environment. So I don't know where I'm going with this, but wow, got me burnt out, got onto ESO, saw the release cycle. And was like, this is something I can live with. Yeah, we already got Wolf Hunter. There's talk of Merkmire. I got in right after Somerset hit. So for me, it feels like there's just a lot happening. And maybe if, if you set your goals to that stuff, I don't know if that helps. That helps me. Yeah, for me, some of the things I do to not get burned out is if I'm not feeling it, I just don't play unless I stream. So I really try, oh, to, stay, try to stay as far away from the game until I have about my two, three hour stream. Which did happen over the summer. Uh, most of July was um, only during the stream I was logging on. And even now a little bit with uh, work and just life, it's hard to find time to get on. But um, yeah, when you leave a game, I've taken these breaks before. And sometimes they're real life um, induced. But sometimes you just get tired of the game and you, you're like, I want to play Halo or I want to play this. And you're like, <laughs> you're like, I can't stream this. No one's going to care. And yeah. um, 
I always tell people, because I'll get asked sometimes, they'll be like, how do you stay in the game so long? Because some of my older viewers who've seen me go now for three years, they're like, how have you been doing it for three years? And I'm like, honestly, the community, the release cycles is huge. It, it keeps everyone interested. You yeah. know, we get Wolf Hunter, Merc Myers are going to be talked about at PAX West, and we're already going to have some new things on it. It's like, Jesus, I, I haven't even, I just got Merc Meyer two days ago. Wolf Hunter. No, Wolf Hunter, Wolf Hunter, Wolf Hunter. Not Merkmire, <laughs> Wolf Hunter. But yeah, I just got Wolf Hunter two days ago. You badass, you. You're yeah, already I playing Merkmire, man. I got it, I got it man. for free. But, um, Gosh. Yeah, I think ESO does a really good job with um, its community. But um, I guess now we can go in, we can kind of do the half and half. So the ESO community, um, and uh, there's a couple questions I have. But first of all, like the... I think we both have seen it on Twitter. I've talked to you about it. The ESO community is just one of the most welcoming, friendly groups of people you could ever meet. From viewers to small streamers to medium to large streamers, everyone is willing. You know, Ninja614 will shout you out. And then, um, right. you know, someone like uh, me or even uh, Ed and the Breton or like people who are just getting into streaming, they'll shout you out. And it's this thing where everyone's just so kind and into the game. Um, I don't, I don't know. I, I love the community. I think it's another reason a lot of us are enjoying ourselves in this space. It, the community is fantastic, honestly. I mean, it's some of the nicest people ever. Like, I'm giving Danny crap in, in chat right now because he deserves it. But that's the sort of thing you deal with is there's, there's some just really good, genuine people that are interested in helping you, which is not something you get in every game community. I noticed that in my experience with WoW, both sides of the coin. The viewers weren't very helpful. I don't think any of them come with me to ESO, so I can talk trash on them all day long. But uh, <laughs> they were very expectant. So, like, they come into your stream. Doesn't matter if you say, like, noob to eat to, to World of Warcraft. They're still saying, why don't you have that thing? I don't get that in ESO. People are like, can I help you go, like, at Sky Shards over there? And then the same with the streamers, too. They seem genuinely excited to talk to you when you co go into their stream. They're like, oh, my God, Kyle, you're here. Hey. And I'm like... You, you know me you're saying it's hi so to humbling me, right and i uh i don't know i there have been many there have been many streamers in the past that i've tried to network with and it feels just like networking it's very bleh. like i feel like i'm not getting anywhere i don't want to talk to this person for anything but selfish gain and then i came to eso and I'm like wow i actually want to talk to you like i would i would have dinner with almost every streamer that's in the ESO category like yeah the, the number and it keeps getting bigger I keep finding new that. people which is hilarious I'm like oh wow I've never seen this person then I go watch and they're just as nice a bearded Chegg was one of the ones I just discovered a little while ago and um he, he tweeted out that he was having like a bad day and life wasn't going great for him and I remember I went in and I just like said a couple nice things I'm like hey bro I know how that feels because like everyone has life struggles and um he was so friendly to me. He followed me back, and he's a partnered streamer. He hosted me. I was like, oh, my gosh, dude. Like, thank you so much. Like, just, like, that that love we give back and forth to each other. Is, it, like I said, it, it makes me want to get back on ESL. See, so that's exactly it. I mean, you got to have a draw to it somewhere. And I, I think that the community is really the key. We're talking in circles about community and how much we love it just because we're obsessed with you guys. But really, truly, I mean... Games are harder to go back to when there's no community there. And for me as a person, that's something I've always found such a drive for. Like, you know, I've never been really certain what sort of content I ever wanted to create. Like, thank goodness we have Twitch that we can just spew out random stuff at you guys all day long and you some for some reason still like us. Uh, but I've always wanted to have a gaming community just because you get like your own little space online and and really the eso community is really good about that they like want to join your guild they want to hang out they want to go do stuff together again wow's not like that those people were very singular in their approach so my switch to eso is really i was like i'm gonna go try, try out eso one day i'm not gonna like it and then you know i was like yeah. okay i guess i'll be back tomorrow this is like monday tuesday and like well guys our wednesday stream is gonna be eso and then it just there's me i never went off. back to wow again yeah. Then we went back. The last thing, so yeah, the last thing I wanted to bring up, <laughs> probably with community, was um, with the streamers too. There's no competition between each other, and I love that too. I love that, um, you know, we're always supportive of each other, and we kind of leave it up to the viewers on who they want to watch. And that that sometimes is a hard pill to swallow. It's sometimes I don't ever like compare myself. It's like, oh, everyone wanted to watch this person tonight and instead of me, or like, what would they do differently? But um, I, you can go and message the streamer, and I've done this, and ask, hey, what are you doing? Like, like what's going on in your community that's getting people mm. excited? And they'll tell you. 
And I'm like, wow. Hey. So um, when I first started, I messaged Kevdu with that because he was just so popular. I'm like, hey, man, I just would love to have like a couple tips. Like, And I was a mod for a stream, and he invited me to a Discord party. He talked me through some stuff, and I was just like, oh, my gosh, like this is so nice. And then like I've PM'd a bunch of other people and just been like, hey, like, wow. So, and I think that's just special, and I think, you know, it's it's the sort of thing where you come into my Discord and I go, dude, I've seen you growing, congratulations. And you're like, dude, I've seen you growing, congratulations. Not like, right. I need to find a way to destroy Snowstorm and take his viewers. <laughs> like Secretly, like, that is my plan. <laughs> so yeah, yes, that's why you came on the podcast. You're like, I must figure yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right, though. They are very nice. I've never thought of doing that, although I had one of those moments last night where I asked a stream or something in-game, and they're like, well... I can't tell you, and then they PM'd it to me on Twitter, and I was like, "Oh, that's pretty cool inside tips." It's like it's it's really nice that people would go like out of their way to to kind of form those bonds. Like I said, not all streamers are like that. I used to have this approach that I really didn't like partnered streamers, um, and 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 this is you know outside of the ESO community, but most a lot of partnered streamers I've run into have not been super nice, have not been worthy of the title partner, no offense to them, but you kind of don't deserve it. You know, you're mean, not nice, whatever you want to say. And then I come to ESO, I'm like, wow, you really changed my mind on what it means to be like the popular streamer because this community, that they don't let it get to their head where other ones do. Um, like you said, they're happy to help you. They're happy to chat with you about stuff. Like you said, Ninja is always cool to like call people out. He genuinely seems to want to spread the love throughout the community when he does his hosts and stuff. Like he goes all around and I genuinely feel like those people deserve it too. I'm like, that's awesome that you got that opportunity. Like you said, it's not me sitting there going, why is so and so up there on the list tonight? I think, but I know other communities yeah. can do that. I think that's honestly comes back to the people who watch because if they see that negativity, they won't watch you. I think in a way, a lot of ESO streamers are forced to be positive because if we're not having a good time supporting each other, the community's gonna be like, screw this guy, he's not part of the team, and then he'll leave, then the, they won't watch. I've seen that happen to a couple people just recently with the whole Twitch drops for ESO stream team people. Ooh, I don't know. Wait. if... Um, so uh, it's it's a controversy. I, I I've been I was told not to talk, talk too much about this. About it. Yeah, we can, oh, we can talk about it off air. <laughs> we, we, we can a little bit, but it was just um, a lot of the people who are on the ESO stream team who are clearly worth being there are going to get some drop exclusive nights where it's going to be just them. And some of the smaller streamers are like, well, what about us? But as yeah. I, I talked to some of the bigger streamers, and I won't I won't say names, but they said to me, you know, it's not like Bethesda owns us. We work to get here. And I'm like, you know what? That's completely fair, and they deserve it. And as a team, we need to support the people who are big as long as they support the people who are small. It's not like Ninja and a bunch of other people right. aren't hosting us, trying to help us get there. And you, I, I love people who think, oh, if I get one big host, I'll have 100 viewers every night. It's like, that's not mm -hmm. true. I've been hosted probably 25 times with over 100 viewers. Maybe one yeah. stays, one stays, one or two. Yeah, and that's, that's great. Right. But hosts aren't everything. You need to have a consistent schedule with a fan base that you can build on. So It's true. Now, I think the perpetual challenge to us is <laughs> as streamers how do you stay positive 90 percent of the time uh to make those people want to come back how do you start forming those bonds with people in your community because chat it, chat let me put out a plea you're 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 primarily you know billy's people so let me say this i can say this on his behalf here help help us help us keep in mind we see you guys as little chat messages let us into your lives <laughs> Yeah, it really is yeah. sometimes hard to make those bonds that go beyond because here we are being like our most sincere self that we can put on camera, but it can be hard to get to know people. You know, those those questions that pry into people's lives and get behind the uh, the curtain sometimes can sound almost intrusive when we say them. Like, like if I were to say to you guys, what's your life's dream or what's your goal for this month? Like those sound kind of like tacky, but I know streamers that use stuff like that to try and like actually genuinely learn more. Saying how's your day doesn't really get that far. I love when um I love when someone comes in and says I didn't have a good day. I love that because I'm like I'm like like you don't have to tell me why, but I hope what I do can make your day a little better. Even just even one percent better. I hope you enjoy your time here because uh, you know you go to bed at night and you're like all right dude you know what four people watched, but one of those people had a really shitty day and it was maybe a little better because of the stream and so there's something to hang your hat up there on for sure. But um. Yeah, the ESO community in general, and with the custom drops for the stream team, a lot of people in the community have begged not to let this become a problem, and I think it's mm. up to you and me and people around our sides, like T the Khajiit, Ekleveth, or a couple off my mind, who just need to stay yeah. positive and, and not bring it up, 
and be that middle ground that the community needs of like the middle streamers who are working their way there but don't get bitter when you know the people who've already made it get that love because they deserve it they've worked their ass off they did something right like and you know oh, yeah I, we have no right to take it away from them and I, I i've had viewers message me you should be getting the custom drops it's like i know but at the same time like we can get there i, I tell them we can get there let's keep working that's right it is a we thing because it, and I, I think i've said something like that before to my community too where it's like listen you guys we can get there to the point that you watching my stream will will start to give you know we can give away fire uh what are the firefly firebug yeah yeah, yeah 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 the little is. giveaways Torch that bug. some of the people that's get. it like you can get us there you you i mean i can do my part i'm gonna be doing the same thing here you know i'm gonna be trying but it's you guys that can make like if you like this if you like this personality this content this sort of like what we're doing in game you viewers can make it happen i can't honestly yeah, it's up to you like, like i can them. i can keep pressing the right buttons on my keyboard day in and day out but if you guys decide not to come back you know that then we will not get there but if you guys do and you share and you let you know you chat chat it up continue being friends with the community and building that uh, a lot of community building cannot be done by the creator of the community no it's up to the community itself it's up to the people and Excuse I me. wish more people knew to take empowerment by that and I don't know how and that might be a me thing that I don't know how to empower people to do that necessarily but that is a thing like you know the community builder cannot build the community they just can lay the groundwork it's up to everyone else to actually fill in the houses one you tip live there one tip i can give you and it's worked really well for me is mod the right people so i'm gonna give a couple shout outs danny is one of my moderators big fuzzy and then mod people in your discord see the people who are talking the most so shadows seto and lily three people in my discord who have just been so vibrant just messaging danny too he's been in there and they just talk to each other like they're friends and i modded them and i said hey try to include more people try to grow my discord and has well joined in, the store. Absolutely amazing, and I would definitely give that tip to anyone. I, I, I was telling Ninja Monkey uh, two weeks ago, I'm like, use your Discord. Seriously, you can talk to your yeah. viewers any time of the day, and mod the people who love it, because they can help you when you know, you're know you at work, when you're streaming. Um, and it was huge. And also mod people in your guild. Seto runs my guild, and God, if I if I didn't have him, I don't know what I'd do, because he's helping them level when I'm doing things. It, it's, it's huge. And that builds that community. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. I think yeah. I think that's something uh, that I've been a little bit. I want to say I've kind of grown my mod ship, my mod crew, based on how many people I kind of have interacting there. Fair I enough. think that is something I need to do a little bit more of, though, is modding the people that are talking a lot, like Danny mods in in my stuff too. Um, yeah, he's a busy guy. He's a very busy guy. <laughs> he always that's he... why I like to yeah. unmod him on occasion to give him a hard time. <laughs> just for the shits and giggles of it but uh <laughs> then he yells at me but it's it's deserved uh but yeah i've modded i've modded people that have been like extremely extremely helpful and people that have been around for a while uh i've kind of also done a little bit of clearing house on some people that like like yep. you're saying on the opposite like people that haven't come around i was like you know if you haven't been here for a while i you know i'm, I'm taking it away just because like you're saying it's 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 a mod ship's a tricky thing it's an incentivization because people I don't want to word this. People Some want to people be a part. Look at, they, want, yes. they want to help you. They want to help you. You get people who care but so much. it can much. be work. It, it can be work. I, I and expect that's the that. tricky thing. Yeah. yeah. Some people want it just for the title. Other people want it to be... Some people want it to be the title and glamorous. Other people are like really willing to put in the work. Danny's someone that's willing to put in the work. I've had people come in and they say, Can I have mod? I'm like, if you watch for nope, a month damn. straight... If you have a month straight... If you're here for a month and you're a nice guy, nice lady, and you're helping my community grow, I'll mod you. I usually give a month trial period, and Danny, I mean, for one month he was there every single day, and then that's, uh, a lot. Of, I've had to demod though too. I, de I take about every two months I go back and look at my mod list, and if they haven't been on for over a week and a half, I usually just get rid of it. And then if they come back like, "Where's my mod?" I'm like, "You can work for it again. I'm sorry, but like I can't yeah. have six mods in chat. Like I'm gonna give your mod ship to someone else." And it, there's a fine line, like with 30 to 40 viewers a night, you can't have 15 mods. You have two, right. two or three. Right. And so people are like, why can't you just have more mods? I'm like, because what if you get into a petty bitch fight and then you start banning each other? Like, like, and I've had that happen. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I can't let that happen. And so um, you need to have one or two mods. And I like to talk to them and party. I like to invite them to a Discord call and say, hey, this is my goal. I would love to have you be a part of it. Let's try to push for it. So. 
I, that's something that's been on my radar, and I've meant to do it, and life has kind of taken over. But, yeah, getting people together in a single room and kind of talking it over has been a goal of mine. And I might even try and do it sometime this weekend, speaking of it. But, uh, yeah, because I, I kind of want to – there are certain things – I've been getting – or putting more thought to actual community planning, which – is one of those things that from the outside seems really easy, but when you're actually in like the streamer seat, you're like, crap, this is actually hard. It's a lot of work now, Right, you're planning events that aren't uh, that aren't for you, is the other thing to it. Like, and, and I don't mean that in a selfish, petty way. I mean it like, well, when you're planning an event that's not for you, and you're not going to be participating in it, you have to look at it in a different way. So like we talked about, we're going to start doing a featured member thing. I want to start doing a community night, like one night a week, where I don't play any piece of ESO that I really want to play. I just kind of let the chat take me where they want me to be. Uh, and then we also started like a guild donation contest thing every week that has like a crown giveaway sort of thing at the end. And it's it's just planning different little things. But we've also kind of gone the opposite direction. When I was a little bit newer and picking up a lot of traction in ESO, I had a community member that wanted, he came up with like a huge list of gr good ideas and he wanted to start implementing them right away. And I was like, sure, you know, I'm a little bit bogged down. I'm meeting so many people. I don't really, I can't tell this person from that. And he's, he wanted to do it and it just, it fell flat on its face because it didn't have a tight enough community. So, so that's even a part of it too. You gotta like grow your community at the pace that it wants to be growing at. Yeah, I don't yeah. Think that's a good and, way to word it. You can't act like it's bigger than it is, or people can smell the BS and then leave. You can't yeah. be like, oh, we're having a guild giveaway. Everyone put in 100 gold, and then two people put in 100 gold. Now it's a 200 gold giveaway. And everyone from the outside goes, this is freaking pathetic. Why would I be a part of this? So you kind of need to move with the growth. So I didn't have yep. anyone running my guild until every night I was getting five new people into my guild. And then I decided, all right, I need someone running it. Or when Discord, we had over 100 members in. I'm like, all right, I need to have people on Discord when I'm at work who can handle that. So right. it's kind of, it's like... It's like adapting to the situation because it looks much more professional and it just transitions so much smoother because people see the growth and they're excited. They're like, oh, yes, let me be a Twitch mod or let me be a Discord mod. And then they get to come with us on that journey. So. Agreed. Yeah. I agree. Have I totally derailed your interview questions? <laughs> honestly, honestly, I have seriously enjoyed it because it's it's so fun talking to another streamer. I, I knew it once we started talking before the, the, the live stream. I was like, this may not go where I want it to, but I'm going to enjoy it. And I think the viewers have too. Um, it, it, it's tough to pull down that wall and let viewers know what you're thinking because you feel selfish. At least for me, brought up to be very selfless, a, a very good person. When you start thinking selfishly, you don't want to say it out loud because it sounds wrong. Like you said at one point, how do I word this? And and I right. know what you meant by it, but we're trying not to come off mean. We're trying to come off as people who want to create a warm, loving, caring community around a really good game. And sometimes you get down when it's not going the way you want it to. Yeah, yeah. And like we said earlier, we're at that point where I think that it's it's probably at its most volatile. I, I have a thinking, and I could be wrong, but I have a thinking that one, I've always had this thought, where we pass like 50 people consecutively, you, your volatility level goes way, way down. Because if you can pull about 50 a night, then your lows aren't super, super low. But, and then you, that that's kind of a goal of mine is like, get to a certain stability level and then apply more. Of yeah, mine's 20 a night. About. That's what mine is. If I get above 20, I'm like, all right, we're, we're doing, and it sounds so bad. Like I said, that's saying it out loud, that hurts. It does, but but like I feel like all right, good. We're we're on we're on our pace. We're growing the community. People are enjoying right. it. Like, so it, it's tough. It's tough. It's it's also very different because we have a live feedback sort of thing from people. Uh, that that's very different than any other form of media. Uh, yeah, any form of media. I mean, it's totally different. Uh, I don't even know what it would even come close. Like, I guess you could say maybe like live radio or something or, you can call uh, or a in. comic show a comic show where right. people can boo and clap right 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 otherwise yeah 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 i've compared that to a friend that's not into twitch i've said it's really like being at a comedy club because he did used to do stand-up comedy um and, and i was saying this friend you know it's very much like if your joke had fallen flat and like that's when when we hit one of those dud nights it's that awkward like ooh, what did i screw up and you kind of just look around at the crickets and go oops <laughs> uh but, you know, any other form of media, like if you're doing pre-recorded YouTube or anything like that, you can always have your, I'm going to just call it anxiety, but you can have your anxieties off air and no one has to witness those. We have to do an extra special extra step of being like, I'm not anxious. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> Don't nervous. Don't notice me perspiring at this issue. I feel and, so you know, we also 
deal with live tech issues too. I don't know if you've had any of that in your past. But... Don't even do it. I've I've had so many streams where the, it just crashed. My computer just turned right. off. And then and then you get back online and you had like thirty people. Now you have eleven. Yes and, yes, and I think to like, myself, well, idiot can't where did everyone go in the three minutes that I restarted? And did I not type in chat six <laughs> times? I'm going to be back up. Like, what? I, I, I know what it is. It's people lurking playing the game who it just yeah. doesn't refresh the viewers. So you still have them all watching, but it just says for them streaming offline. They never refreshed it. Right. And so that's it's what happens, but it's tragic. Yeah, no, it's 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 very... It's got a whole different genre of pitfalls. But, I mean, the fun thing is that uh, unlike just sticking a stagnant old video up on YouTube and waiting for comments or something, they actually get to ask people questions in return. So it's a weird cycle of, of good and good and bad in its own ways. Yeah, and I feel awful for the people who stick around after the stream goes to shit. I feel bad if your stream <laughs> crashes, you log back on and no one's there, but there's like three people and they really care and you give them such a bad show because you're oh. just so... I, I leave those streams and I feel so guilty because I'm like, you know what? Screw the people who left. I should have been the best version of myself I could be for the people who stuck around. But it's hard yeah. to keep that mindset. That's why we have the sticky notes, as we were saying. Um, so it... <laughs> Guys, we yeah. aren't perfect. We have to remind ourselves to stay decent during some of our streams. So. Yeah, yeah. Be kind to people, Kyle. Don't t don't tear them down as a human being. That's don't what mine should say. <laughs> Stop looking at your numbers. That's what mine says. It says, do not do not talk numbers. That's point number four, Ninja Monkey. Mine says, relax. Don't get mad. Don't talk about viewers. There it is. It's as transparent as I can be. And, and it's tough to hold that, though. It really is. You know, that's why you keep it there. And sometimes I swear it disappears when I'm in a bad mood. I swear that sticky note runs away because I don't see it when I need to sometimes. Especially last night. Isn't that night. the truth? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, last night was one of those nights where I my rage kind of creeped in. Some viewers go, I love your rage. I'm like, but I hate it. As a person, I hate it. I can't watch it back. I feel so guilty. I'm like, oh... That's not what I meant to do when I started streaming. I'm not going to be a rager like Angry Joe or something who you love to watch get mad. It's like, yeah. it's not me. I wish I could do that, but I don't think I have the voice. So. <laughs> well, hey, if there's anything positive, I woke up this morning and read uh, a Reddit post about Twitch. It was someone asking for opinions or advice on... Oh, crap. I can't remember the initial question, but basically it went like... Someone's like, I like chill streams and then the next person went no i like it when people are really positive and upbeat in streams and the other goes no i like chill streams and i just thought to myself you know what the good news about this is it doesn't matter how i act some people just just like we all know life works some people are gonna like it some people aren't gonna like it and we just have to you know hope and entice the people that are just enjoying that content anyway you can't really just be you can't be what you think that others want you just have to be the most authentic you and, you and you're always going to piss someone off there's always going to be a hater for all the nice messages i've gotten i've I've definitely have a little collection of messages of people just telling me you're shit dude and i'm like oh i'm like I'm like wow and I'll, i i do it on my youtube channel i made this video it's kind of an off topic i made this video called eso is dying and it was a complete spoof because it was during the last big event and it was so laggy because there were so many people playing my game was glitching and so I just clicked OBS record, and I was just laughing, having a good time with all my friends. And I was like, I'll post this on clickbait, and then people come and see it's actually a lot of fun. And this guy, he commented, it's so funny watching you act, and I'm going to pardon my language, act retarded with how the viewer, for how the mechanics work and how the game engines work. And so, and he goes, the people say there's millions of people that watch this game, but there's only ever like 500. We're the millions of people. And so I commented back, like, the most respectful response. I'm like, hey, man, those are some really good points. Um, I think people do different things, so different nights you have more viewers, and they're trying with drops and he responded back respectable response oh and it was like and I, I was like that's that's you have to handle that you can't because some people just have a bad day then they just explode on someone and it's yeah you know you kind of got to be like man i hope like you're okay i know i must have something to make you angry but you got to detach yourself so it, it's tough well it's true and, and you know as a streamer you do get people that have just a bad attitude that day and like you said it, it can be a really good opportunity to make someone's day better but at the same time uh it can make some awkward situations on occasion where you're just like well i know you're usually really cool but tonight you actually are pushing that boundary line and something that i need to was getting better at and need to reorient myself to is really cutting out any toxic component of a community like i and when I say that, I'm talking about the people that are those very gray 
area sort of people. They're not like blatant racist trolls. I'm talking about the people that bring things down. Like I've had to, I had to ban someone like that before um, in the last couple months, just pre ESO, but just barely, where they were a community person. They'd been warned once before, stop coming to my stream. Come back many months later as quote unquote reformed. But they would just vampire our community a little bit. Like they're just sucking the happiness out anytime they came to the stream. And it was a hard, it was a hard call for me because like I said, wasn't a blatant racist troll or anything like that. We can just insta ban, it, ban. but it was someone that chats, but chats negatively. That stuff can be hard on the streamer too. You know, and you're trying to make everyone happy. When you're our size, striving for viewers, and you have to ban one of them, people people will be in your chat ban this guy, and you're like, how can I ban him? He's giving me one more view. That's huge. I, that's important to me. I don't want to get rid of them. You want to change them. You want to be like, hey, try acting like this, because I don't want to get rid of you. But I've had to do it too, and it stinks. And I've had people who will literally just say, hey, why don't you rage? Do something that'll make you get mad. And I'm like, no. And and then luckily. Right. When you get that community, though, the community will say, hey, shut up. Like, stop. Like, that's not what we're about here. And I love that. I had one time someone telling me, get mad. Keep getting angrier. And one of my mods said, you need to, like, shut up about this. Like, he, that's not what he streams for. And I was like, I was like, thank you. Like, exactly. And it was, uh, sometimes you got to let your community handle the community. Because we can't. Yeah. No, that's the truth. And I think that there's something... I think that's kind of a point that I would love to discuss with my mods too. Is uh, you know, as as we grow, taking liberty with the ban hammer, like you're really not gonna upset me if you accidentally ban or not even accidentally, but if you if you as a mod think it's a good ban, do it. I won't be mad at you for banning someone, you know, in any other way. Like, just because sometimes if the mod takes the initiative and ban someone they think is reading is toxic to the community that's better that's better because that's a more genuine ban than if i do it. if i do it i'm looking at it through the eyes of a streamer taking it all kind of to heart but if like danny bans someone that is saying some things that i'm not sure if it's negative and he can tell oh yeah that's someone like bringing the levels down here in chat what they're saying is making the rest of chat uncomfortable that person i talked about used to make our chat quiet because they were just sucking the life out of it but if a mod does that that feels a lot more like pe the people taking the power yeah the people have like, said hey we don't like this yeah it's not that i'm trying to like say mods you have to do my work for me it's more like if you do it that's more genuine than me having to do it i can ban a racist troll but eh, if someone's just like sucking this, the energy out of you do it man just pull the trigger yeah, and it also, it's easier when you're still streaming and you don't even notice it, and then you look back and they did it, and you're like, wow, it didn't even bring down the stream. Like, they just handled the problem, and I could just keep entertaining. And then that, that's such a huge plus, because sometimes you lose that train of thought, that hype, that fun time. When you have to ban someone, you're like, I'm not going to deal with that. Like, I remember I've had times where viewers fight in chat, and I have to be the one to say, guys, stop fighting. And then luckily a mod will step in. But it, And then the worst is when you get PMs, and they're like, hey... I didn't like this. And it's like, yeah, I know you didn't like it, but I, I can't, like, I'll ban the person, but it, it's tough when two viewers just don't get along, too. That's hard as well. Mm. And you like both I've the disabled. viewers. Yeah. <laughs> I've disabled my PMs uh, for, twi for Twitch. I have disabled. to. Yeah, I have to. On Twitch, I had to. I've done it before on Discord, too, because... And, and I, my natural reaction is to, to just do it because I have this feeling that nothing, I, I say this to my viewers all the time. Nothing good goes down in Discord PMs. Uh, <laughs> I've had really bad, not really bad, but I've had you know I've had photos sent that then the person has regretted sending. Uh, and I'm just like, God damn it, just just go into general chat and chat because nothing good's gonna happen in here make it i want it all above board yeah and i always want viewers to get along and i want the whole community to get along and when like when gossip starts happening you're like oh like i just apologize i'm like i'm really sorry i'll try not to let that happen again but there's not much i can do and you want the community to everyone just to get along and i try to try to say that i'm like guys if you're gonna be part of my community if you're gonna be part of the eso community in general you have to accept people for who they are what they like and as long as they're not toxic like they are our family and they are we have their back just as much as we hope they have our back like that's just the way it has to be like so. it's true it's very true yeah uh yeah you just have to i mean there there are those times you'll go into a twitch stream and you see someone you're like i just don't like that as a chatter what they're saying is 
Yeah, I even had one of those today when I was viewing someone's stream. I was like, the, the responses they were, I was, I was interacting with the streamer in a positive way, and this person tried to, you know, get in on the conversation. I'm like, I don't like how you're wording that. But that's just life, you know, you just got to deal with people that you don't always love. So I'm just like, whatever, I'll just chat around you and kind of ignore some of those, but. Yeah, dude, we're coming up on our hour here. I know already. It's like we just sat down to chat I, now. I, 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 it's this thing where I know we both also have to go stream right now, but um, one of these nights we'll have to take like two hours aside because I feel like we can dig into a lot of this stuff in even more detail. Um, the chat has been amazing. I've been going and looking at it, and it's been very vibrant. And I've seen a lot of really nice people in there, um, and that's awesome I too. I've been doing my best to harass them while we're I know, talking. I've been seeing that. You're impressive. I, I can't do that. I can't type and talk. So you you get the plus one there, Kyle Dempster Studios. I just S. don't want them to feel like they're getting away with murder while we're busy <laughs> talking. Like, I want them to that know happens. the watchful eye is on them. I've done that. I've watched a podcast back, and then I see what they're saying, and I'm like, wow, some mean stuff. <laughs> they're all, yeah, they're mean. Look at them. Ignore me, daddy. I looked in. <laughs> Don't make it. All right, but I'm guys to close off. This was one of my favorite podcasts I've done so far. Kyle, thank you so much for coming on. It, you know, it hasn't happened yet where the conversation is just gone, and I've loved it. So thank you. Well, thank you for having me. I really, really appreciate it. This is such a good night to do it too. I'm like amped and ready to go, and it was super fun. We definitely need to get together and and do this again sometime um, because I can tell we can just talk for days about this stuff. Yeah, I. I, you know, keep your Discord PMs on for me because I might start harassing you about when I'm going to get you on the podcast next. Because this Sounds was, like a plan. This was a lot of fun. And guys, I just want to let you all know we're both going to be streaming after this. So this is what you're going to do for me, all right? This is what you're going to do for me. You're going to pull up two tabs. This is crazy. On Google Chrome, Internet, um, Internet Explorer, Windows Edge, Firefox, you can open up two different tabs. It's crazy. And you're going to pull me and Kyle up. And you're going to go back and forth. And you're going to say hi to both of us, all right? Because both of us deserve the love. And then whoever whips out first, I think it's going to be me because I have a job interview tomorrow. We're going to go over and give old Kyle Dempster a host because tonight was a lot of fun. And I actually owe him. I think he hosted me last. I think I have, like, a tally of, like, who's hosted who last. <laughs> but, Are you uh, writing this down? Are you keeping this written uh, down? The, uh, what if I pulled up another sticky note with a bunch of tallies oh on I it? I wouldn't surprise <laughs> me. I've considered it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... What I'm going to do to everyone who's in here, I'm going to close the stream because I need to readjust to get to my Xbox. Kyle is going to get ready for his stream. I want to thank everyone for watching this. This was a lot of fun. Um, Kyle's actually going to start his own post podcast as well, guys. So make sure you follow him on Twitch, Twitter, and all this stuff so he can let you know when that's going to happen. And I best yes. hope I'm invited to be on. Um, you will. Yeah. Can I can I plug that really quickly? Yes, do it. Plug it, please. So we're, we're uh, if you guys know Stark Realm, uh, very, very chatterbox in all of our streams. Uh, he and I are doing one this Sunday, first episode after Bethesda days, game days, whatever it is this weekend. So we are going to do one based on newbies coming into ESO. So for the first episode, I'd really appreciate all you veteran players out there kind of looking at that episode and kind of guiding us. Uh, we're like I said, the first one's going to tackle like choosing your race, your class, very basics. And we're going to try and grow incrementally because if you haven't started ESO recently, it can be a tough game to get into. We didn't even get to talk I about only... it today. That's why we need another podcast so we can see. Talk. Well, you know what? I come back on and talk and you can come on ours and talk. So let's do it. All right. It sounds good, Th dude. Thank you so much again. I'm not going to end the call yet. I'm just going to end the stream. So, guys, I will see you in 10 minutes. You'll see Kyle in 10 minutes. Remember, two tabs. It's crazy stuff. I know cutting-edge technology. Thank you guys so much. We'll both see you in 10 minutes. Bye!